Thank you for joining us on Data Cloud Now, where we bring you the latest in all things data in business and industry. Today, I'm joined by Karim Koka, CEO and co-founder of Blue Cloud, along with Alex Stacy, board member for Blue Cloud and co-founder and partner at Hudson Hill Capital. Gentlemen, such a pleasure to have you on the program today. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Karim, you offer services to clients ranging from Fortune 500 enterprises to mid-market companies and startups. What's the data showing you in terms of strategies moving forward? There are two key conversations, and um, let me start with, not surprisingly, Gen AI. Uh, many people think that we are um, facing the biggest computer revolution that we have ever faced, and I think that way too. Um, and um, this definitely enables uh, or emphasizes the importance of uh, modern data cloud, and hence our Snowflake uh, partnership uh, puts us in the middle of the conversations for that. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also anticipate a major app redevelopment uh, phase coming because as we create these uh, proof of concepts or um, best practices by Gen AI by using data, then that has to be uh, implemented uh, for the enterprise that, and that can only be done by updating the existing uh, applications and, um, you know, putting it in the business logic uh, in the enterprise and then doing it again. Um, for that, we have a very strong um, software engineering team that we work with fintechs around here as well. And then combining the two capabilities, I think, gives us a unique perspective and ability to work with customers and take them uh, from the start and um, drive the process. And this is going to be a continuous and very exciting process. Now, with this, the second conversation is talent to enable this because this is all new. Um, what uh, Snowflake has done for um, uh, um, data warehouses, our customers want us to do for talent management. They want flexible, scalable, and uh, cost-effective um, solutions um, that can scale up and down. Um, and we are a perfect position for that too, um, you know, um, we believe that talent is distributed uh, equally, but opportunity is not. And historically, what happened would be like talent coming where the opportunity is, like that's why I moved to the U.S., uh, but that's not practical in the current uh, day and age. And uh, then the second way was like offshoring, taking work and then sending it to offshore and let it uh, get done there and then come back. Um, but in, again, uh, with the current way things are, that's not, not effective as well. So what we do is we take uh, opportunities to where talent is. Uh, we operate in tens of countries and then uh, have, um, I think I would say that our, um, um, one of the key uh, capabilities is that um, running a global company seamlessly or at once creating the culture and share this capability with our customers, enable the generic revolution and much more. Thank you for that perspective. Alex, from your standpoint, Blue Cloud's mission is to enable enterprises to transform to the cloud. Why is this mission so critical for the future for your clients? Yeah, it's really fundamentally, if you don't have the data in the cloud, then you're not going to be able to utilize the Gen AI tools and machine learning tools that Karam was just talking about. And so the cloud, while it seemed at the advent to be a convenience, potentially a cost play, it's now become table stakes. Really, if you aren't in the cloud utilizing a modern data stack, you're not going to be able to participate in the way in the wave of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, revolution that we're that we're talking about here today. Um, and so, you know, really, that's what Blue Cloud enables. Um, it works closely with our corporate customers using tools like Snowflake to bring customer applications, customer infrastructure into the into the cloud so that they can utilize that data. And I also think what's interesting is the type of data that is really available to you is starting to change. So historically, when you had on-premise legacy uh, vertical market or horizontal software applications, the data tended to be very transactional. Uh, so it, it, it sat in these transactional databases and uh, and uh, utilizing that data was very difficult and it only told you parts of the story. Having your enterprise data stack be based in and built in the cloud, you open up different types of data, different formats of data, unstructured data, and, and really can get different insights that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. And so that's why it's so important. It's not just 
a matter of cost or convenience. At this point, particularly if your competitors are going to be utilizing cloud-based tools, they're building tools that are AI or machine learning empowered. They're making predictive services that uh, are customizing uh, solutions for customers in a, in, a, in a better format. You know, that's that's something that you're going to have to, to battle as an incumbent so that you're not disrupted. And so it's very important to be able to see that that take place. Great to hear, gentlemen. I'm glad that you mentioned Snowflake because I want to dive into the data cloud a little bit deeper. How does its ease of use allow your customers to do more? Karen, we love your perspective. Um, you probably know that we get Hubu um, implementation partner of Snowflake. What that means is we only provide um, Snowflake solutions to our customers. And the reason for that uh, is the answer to your question. Um, like we have, I've been in this space for 30 years and 10 years ago, uh, founders of your Snowflake was, was um, at Oracle and trying to um, work on the limitations that data centers and all the physical constraints uh, provide. And, um, you know, they figured that they must go to cloud uh, for the uh, scalable um, and um, high performance um, capabilities of cloud. At the same time, we were suffering with the same uh, problems that they anticipated. And as soon as we, um, you know, met Snowflake, uh, it was almost too good to be true. Like, it, it's like, um, all the problems are fixed, like where have you been all our life kind of moment. Then we immediately started working with Snowflake. Um, and that was table stakes to start with. Um, it, the cloud independence uh, is huge. Data sharing is, I think, still understated. The importance of data uh, sharing is going to be understood more as uh, the current consumption goes from the 1 billion to 10 billion in a few years, uh, the network effect is going to be much more uh, pronounced and enter like we were going to be com connecting to all enterprise data um, in between. So that's going to be a key differentiator, continue to be a key differentiator. Then came um, Snowpark, which is interesting that, uh, to be honest, like when a technology company goes a little bit outside the initial um, competence area, there may be some hiccups, but Snowflake came and our first uh, benchmarks were like 4x performance gains wow. compared to competition. Uh, and I almost told our people, is this correct? Are you doing this selectively? Like, but, and they said, to be true. <laughs> yes, I mean, like, you know, a little bit uh, uh, selective with they said this is true. Then we had to check with um, engineering teams in Snowflake, and they like they were saying yes, 3.7 times. I'm like amazing. I think that explains why um, the adoption in the first uh, six months, 30 percent of uh, existing Snowflake um, cu customers started using it, it, and it became an instant hit in that community, um, which is amazing. Um, and as we continue working all uh, Gen AI in, um, native, in, um, you know. Um, integration, um, I know that uh, the innovation in Snowflake is not stopping. Uh, it, as it is, it's amazing, but there is so so much innovation going on and we will co-implement those for our customers and move forward. It's a true partnership and continuing to evolve. Great, great to hear. Okay. Alex, from your perspective, anything you'd like to add? Nothing. I mean, that, I think that was fantastic, particularly the performance improvements. That's what we like to see. You know, gentlemen, We've already discussed this, but Gen AI remains the topic of the hour. What impact do you see this technology having across the marketplace? Karen, but love your thoughts. I mean, as I uh, started, it's transformative. Uh, it's going to change how we uh, evolve as uh, human beings and uh, very exciting times ahead. But let me come back to the com customer conversations. Uh, a very established uh, customer of ours, uh, um, they have thousands of um, very well prepared customer pitches um, throughout the years that they prepared. And when a new customer comes with a new need, uh, what the salesperson does is he goes and checks the existing stack and then gets parts and pieces and then creates a new uh, presentation and then goes to the customer with the presentation. Uh, obviously, this part is tedious, presenting this. Uh, preparing this and also you're depending the patience or um, you know experience of the salesperson which may be a, a semi-perfect situation sometimes 
So they asked us that, um, can you automate this? So given some certain parameters, you can go and look at the whole library and bring the best out of it. And we said, this is a great use case, we can. Um, and as we do this, now what's happening is a uh, sales team, uh, the worst part of their job is going away. Uh, they are much more effective. You don't need as much experienced salespeople maybe because since the presentation is perfect, a new salesperson uh, may deliver it as good. And eventually maybe we don't need the salesperson. The whole thing may be automated. So this is a big cost savings for that. Uh, customer, but also improvement, um, and um, one of many, like every day we're working on um, projects like this is very exciting. Allowing the team to do more with less. Yes. Exciting next chapter, totally. indeed. Alex, from your lens, I want to dive in a little bit to the private equity side of okay. Gen AI. What future do these investments look like and what excites you most as you look towards the future? We haven't really seen, I think, the impact from these, honestly. Um, they've come out as LLMs, I think, primarily is the way that people think about them. And they haven't been integrated in enterprises, which is really how customers every day, aside from logging into your chat GPT account, are going to be able to interact with them. And so what's really interesting for me as I think about the roadmap for Blue Cloud, their customers, and then really our portfolio companies or companies that we're looking to invest in is how are you going to actually in, implement this and in, in integrate this into your company operations or the way that the customer actually interacts with you? I think the reality is there's a lot of promise with Gen AI, but until you're integrating those in the existing enterprise technology that's already there, it's not going to, it's not really going to impact people's lives in the same way. And I think there's maybe a, a I think, a, a common misconception that there's going to be this large company that emerges out of Silicon Valley that basically automates everything in everybody's lives all at once. And I think the reality is that you go to the Snowflake events, you talk to the Blue Cloud customers, and those are the people that are going to be bringing this technology into people's lives. And, and that's really what's exciting for me in terms of working with Blue Cloud is we're really at the forefront of helping enterprises bring these technologies, which are going to be transformative into the everyday consumer's life by interacting with, I don't know if I can name customers, but Hyatt or Hilton or uh, their banking customers. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's a really interesting top point in time, but we're really in the, probably the first half of the first inning, in my opinion, of the adoption of this for, for broader society and the economy uh, writ large early stages, but the collective interest really runs the gambit. Thank you for that perspective, Alec. Exactly. Gentlemen, I know we've covered a lot, but I love the opportunity sitting down with founders because I think you have a unique perspective of what's coming next. As you both look out over the coming months, what's top of mind? Alex, let's start with you. So we actually just got done with our 2024 budgeting process for all our portfolio companies. And what was so interesting is every single one of the key strategic or operational items dearly uh, that we wanted to accomplish in 2024 had technology or data at its root, really trans thinking about ways to transform the processes of our, oper of our operations to get more efficient or to be able to address our customers in a way that increases our revenue. And really, 2024, a bit of an uncertain economic environment. And so what do you need to do in those environments? You need to be driving revenue and you need to be reducing costs, bringing efficiencies in, into play. And so digital transformation was really at the forefront of what we were talking about around the tables with our partners, with our, with our uh, portfolio companies for 2024. And so to me, that's really the theme, which may be a continuation of the theme, but it's really the theme for us in 2024. Thank you, Alex. And Karen, from your perspective. Uh, I will provide um, maybe a different uh, response to this, uh, but I want to also highlight our partnership, um, you know, Blue has been a great company, but it has changed significantly in the best way uh, since, um, you know, Hudson Hill uh, invested in us. It definitely brings, and I experienced both sides, so can talk for both sides, that it brings uh, discipline at, at the same time, um, lots of assistance and uh, new capabilities that otherwise would not be possible, but also credibility as we interact with our customers or partners. Uh, even uh, key talent joining us. Um, so I would s uh, suggest that any company maybe in our um, situation seriously consider this because it has been a game changer. And I think that strength 
definitely uh, solidifies the fact that um, next few years we're going to work really close together and be successful. I'm exciting to see what comes next, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me on Data Cloud Now. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green. See you soon.